My home stereo system consists of some DIY speakers, a turntable which is about to be stripped down and, and completely rebuilt, and hopefully one day a, a home, a handmade amp from a kit. Um, so if you're a bit of a DIY fan like me, then you'll know that some of those projects um, take a long time and others you can do in an afternoon. The cables in my stereo system look like this the RCA interconnects between all the components. They're, they're cheap, they're nasty, and for the most part they get the job done, but I think we can do a little bit better. So today I'm gonna to show you how I made these. Um, they're a fairly um, budget, but still a, a light years ahead of, of those cables I just showed you. They use um, music cable or guitar cable, um, that comes in at about $5 a meter, and the plugs are re-nutric plugs. I'll put all the links to where I purchased all this stuff in the description. The plugs were a, um, a couple of dollars each from eBay, for, so for a, a set of cables like this, you, you're sort of coming in around the $20 mark, which is very reasonable considering the upgrade that it gives you from those um, crappy you know, interconnects that are bundled with most, um, most things. Anyway, let's get started. All you're going to need is a half decent soldering iron, uh, a set of handy hands to hold things in place for you, um, the plugs and the cable. You can use some um, heat shrink to keep the set together once you're finished. I've just used little bits of uh, Velcro to do that and that's done a pretty good job, but whatever floats your boat. And other than that, um, either a sharp knife or some wire strippers to strip back the insulation as we go. The biggest uh, hurdle I found with this was actually getting them perfectly the same length uh, and I'm going to have to rebuild these because I'm about uh, four millimeters out and, and whilst I'm pretty sure it doesn't make a huge different difference, um, it just drives me nuts knowing that it's not perfect. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the tools we need for this job uh, we need some snips to cut our wires to two equal lengths, some wire strippers to uh, strip off the insulation. I also use a blade for that as well. A, a ruler because there's some specific lengths that um, you need to get to to make life a bit easier when it comes to soldering. Obviously the soldering iron and um, some of these hands as well to hold things in place are pretty handy. Okay, so I've got uh, now my wire cut in two equal length pieces. pieces. I'm only going to start using with one, and we're only going to be looking at one end to start with. So, as far as stripping the insulation goes, we need 8mm of the outer insulation stripped back, and a total of 3mm of the inner conductor exposed. So as you're stripping back the insulation, just keep that in mind. The first layer is going to come off, and then you're going to have your copper, um, your, your woven copper uh, sheath and then you sort of pull that back, strip the next layer of insulation and expose your um, core, center core conductor. So I just kind of line things up a little bit just to get a rough idea of, of what's what. And I actually prefer using the blade, but as whatever you like will do the job. I think if you're doing multiples of these, um, then the wire strippers would be easier. Okay, so there you can see the braided conductor. What we want to do with that is just sort of pull it back, tease it back, and twist it up and then sort of have it bent off to the side. So you kind of just pull it out like this, pull it away from the, um, from the next layer of insulation. Pull it all around to one side. You can see I've cut a few of those strands, which isn't ideal, but you get better at it. Push it down. Okay, so then we're left with that. So the next step, we want to expose three millimeters of the inner core. So that's a little bit less than half of that length that you've already taken off. It's not much. And you'll notice that the next layer actually has two insulated layers. 
it has this black layer and then another clear layer of insulation. So I'm actually going to use my wire strippers for this one. Made a little bit of a mess of that, but not too bad. There we are. So it's about three millimeters of the center core exposed. So just before we get onto the soldering, um, we need to do something with the connector here. The connector comes in three parts. It comes with the, the actual conductor component, this little clasp here, and the outer case. Um, at the moment, we just need the outer case. And so what we're going to do before we tin our, um, our conductors is just straighten everything up because we need to slip our wire through the case like that, pull it down, get it out of the way, and then get your cables ready for tinning. Please don't mock my soldering, I don't get a lot of practice at it. So we've got our two conductors tinned, time to assemble the plug. Before assembling the plug, I also like to tin the connector where I'm going to be soldering the cable onto. So just take your time setting this bit up because uh, you really don't want the, the connectors to um, short out. My biggest problem is I push everything out of uh, alignment with the soldering iron, so I just got to take it easy. Alright, repeat that for the other side and then we're good to assemble the plug. I'm just going to show you a little trick here. For the outside connector, um, it's, it's almost impossible to get my soldering iron in there. Um, but what I can do, because I've tinned the, the um, conductor and I've tinned the connector and they're pressing against each other, I can pretty much just heat it up from the outside like this and just keep an eye on it and you can see there on the inside the solder melts and you make a nice clean joint much easier than trying to jam your soldering iron there, in there and, uh, and melt everything in and undo the previous joint that you've just done. Okay, now we're ready for assembly. Remember that other little bit of plastic that we had before? It slots over the wire with the tapered side pointing away from the connector. Like that, and it just slides up and sits on the opposite side um, to this, uh, this section here. Sorry, we're having a bit of problem focusing. And then once that's over, slide up your cover gently over everything. And then once the threads meet, it's just a matter of gently tightening it up. It does get quite firm and what you might find is that you need to use a, a tool here and it has got some flat spots where you can put on a, a little shifter there and just be careful um, not to mark it because even though we know that's never going to be seen we know how devastating that would be. So there we have it our updated RCA cable uh, done with a bit of DIY love and some relatively cheap components and um, I hope you have much success making yours and that it improves the sound of your stereo system. Thanks for watching, I'm going to be putting up some other videos of the other DIY aspects to my stereo system including a um, 
a slideshow of the construction of my speakers. I, I didn't take video of it because it would have been a year's worth of footage uh, to work through. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for that one. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.